fantastic solo duo or even a trio base and yes this will have a space for you to put your would-be horses i know we're doing this just before horses come out but it'll be soon enough so this is an amazing base because you can get started for next to nothing in the first 20 minutes and and you can have this thing totally secure if you need to sign off with no bps and no metal so let's do it this is a variation of a terrain bunker base what that means is so the uh, stability, or I should say, terrain stability bunker base. So what that means is the stability part of the bunker is going to be twig, and it's half into the terrain like so. So the best place to do this base is a place that has an elevation uh, variation. And really what you want to see is, see my blue triangle here? You want those vertical posts, the thick boy posts, sticking out, but you don't want those left and right horizontal posts uh, showing on the on the left-hand side of the screen. So this would be actually a good placement. You can do this anywhere, but the best place to do this is on the shoreline. So you see how only my chunky posts, the two posts are sticking out to the top? That's how you do it. So you want to test the rest of the build by placing a triangle here, a triangle here, and one here, and then a square down here. Oops, we'll get there. And this one here that's lit up is the only one that needs to be submerged. But you need to make sure that you can still place your other tiles. And, uh, okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to make the TC cabinet. And we're going to do this as if we were getting uh, shot at or if this were, you know, it's just you and you have all your supplies on you. So the first thing you want to do is make sure you have a TC, which I don't have yet. So let's go ahead and craft it. Obviously, we're on Builder's Paradise, so these are all instant crafts. Uh, I would say make sure you have at least three wooden locks and a wooden double door and a wooden single door. Uh, you don't necessarily need a metal door because you're going to be online for all of it. Let me go ahead and place this up here so you can kind of see what we're doing here. We're doing this all in-game so you guys can kind of see what this all looks like in real time. It's going to take a bit longer than some of the other wedges, but so you can kind of see the configuration. Okay. Maybe the uh, the shadow doesn't help. Okay. So once you do kind of your placement check, honestly, if you can body bag at the outpost and then come back here uh, after you place these twigs, then I would like commit your supply. So what I would do here is I would place a wall here, a frame here, and a wall here. I would go right to making this stone, make this wood to start, and then place your double door. So even if you get clapped, you still own the door. And then go right to making these stone. Now you're semi-safe, and again, you're doing this on a budget. So what I would do now is I would place this tool cupboard. Ooh, we're going to have to do this again? Oh, no, okay, we're placing through it. Thank goodness. Okay, I was like, <laughs> if this pushes us up, we're going to have to move. Uh, okay, so we're going to go all the way to the left and all the way to the back. Make sure the knobs are facing you on the tool cupboard, and then place your lock. Place any extra supplies inside of here, and then what I would do is make sure you have your wooden door ready. and have a, a, a decorated wooden door. Open this up. And then you can commit the rest of your supplies to the rest of the build here. So this is going to be where your furnaces are at, and this is going to be your main door. If you don't have enough stone, you can make this wood. Um, it's not super important right now. Uh, a lot of times I'm pretty poor, so I usually end up just making that wood. Because honestly, doing this stone, this stone, and then the rest of this stone, if you can afford it, can sometimes stretch your budget if you're solo, right? And if you need to make these other parts wood, so be it. Um, you can always come back and convert those. Then what I would do is go back to the main uh, tool cupboard here and then put on the rooftop. But before that, let's go ahead and get up a, a bird's eye view so you can see this. I know this is going to make this build so much longer, but hopefully this helps. I don't have admin, so I can't like fly around. So this is what it looks like. And yes, you're vulnerable, so you want to make sure you cap that TC. And what makes this great is even if you can only afford one wooden double door look, you've still got a single pass through. You still have an airlock. It's janky, but it works. And the idea is you're going to use wood to start because your bunker is going to close you off if you can't afford any metal. And I'll be honest, when I first start, I can't afford that. You know what I mean? And usually by this point, I usually put whatever else I have, and then I go out and farm a little bit more because this is usually enough. And then you don't want to farm too far from the base, to be perfectly honest. And then make sure you put down a sleeping bag. I like to put the sleeping bag right here by the door. Um, uh, I keep the door shut so it's off the sockets. And then I kind of bring it up close to this side. And this is where you would use a light-up sleeping bag because it helps with nighttime. Because you're actually going to put a, um, what do you call it, workbench right here in the back wall. Okay, so now uh, if you go out there and farm a little bit... 
or even if you have a couple trees, what you can do here is you can make this wood. I'm going to do the cheap version first to kind of show you what it takes. So, Because a lot of times like y you can sign on for a bit and then you have to go do something. So I would get this upgraded to stone as quickly as possible. And we're just going to show you the bunker mechanism for this to get it going. So technically you could make that wood. These will have to be stone here. And then you're going to put a tile here. And we're just going to show you. And then after this I'll do all the upgraded variations of this. Just kind of save time. But this is what I mean. This takes no metal and this takes no BPs to get a completely stone wall all the way around. And yes, these are all wooden doors. Because let's be honest, you can't really afford that right away. Am I right? So that's going to be stone. That's going to be stone. So you want your interior all to be stone and your foundations to be stone to start. And this is to, like as you started, right? Like obviously you're not going to leave it like this for days and days. But I'm, sometimes you can because... Uh, most people are like, oh, that, that guy's poor. I'm not going to raid him. And then right here is going to be a wooden doorway like with a frame and a wooden door. I know that sounds crazy, but for real, that's the thing. Have it open inwards. You still have an airlock situation here. And you'll see here in a second why this works so well. And then out here, um, I would say make this wood. If you can afford it stone, then go for it. This is just good for later because we're going to do the stable. Because if you place a ceiling tile back here and... Um, you don't have this foundation, you actually can't place it. So at the minimum, make this wood. If you can afford it, stone, so be it. Make the stone. Uh, go here and make the uh, angled roof tile here. Triangle roof tile, it's going to stick right here. And then you have a wall tile. Make sure it's hard side facing you. You do have to upgrade that to stone, and you do have to make that stone. So here's, here's the look, right? Hopefully we can get up here and get a better angle. So I'm showing you the, the cheapest way to lock this up. So this is the wedge, but this is going to be the wedge barn. And you'll see why here in a moment. But like, if everything's locked up here and we seal this base, there's no way you can raid this unless you go into the stone. Like, not no way. It's not unraidable. But the, the point is, if this is sealed, they have to go through stone walls. It doesn't matter that this is wood or that this is wood or that this is wood or that the door is wood because the protection comes from these tiles and this wall here protects you completely. It is a stone wall raid no matter where you look at this. So there's no metal, literally no metal, and no BPs. And this is an all the way around, was 10 satchel raid in the first 20 minutes of the wipe. And that's what makes this so good. And then you can have time to go collect the rest of the stuff. Now, the key to this is, since it is a bunker base, you are gonna have to be on the, on the interior to open this up. Let me show you how. Let me break this first. So uh, you always want to keep this twig, by the way. I know we're taking a while to explain this, but... So the way you place this on the interior is you have your triangle tiles out, right? A triangle roof tile, and back up into the corner. It turns blue, and then as long as you match whatever the uh, other roof tile is, and it's stone, that is now complete. And the whole way you can knock this down on the interior is you soft side this with your rock. Never upgrade this. This always stays twig. And that's what makes this so dang good, right? And look, we have all wooden doors in here. Heck, I have a wooden frame on the inside here. So that's how you get it started. All right, so from this point forward, we're going to do all, like, upgraded for the most part. And so I'm going to change this to a uh, double door, and we're going to put our boxes and stuff on the interior, and we'll show you how the rest of this gets flushed out. And I'll show you right here. Watch. We go in here, and we break this, and it's open. Now, yes, you can get deep on because people can stand on your roof and stuff, but that's not the point. This is your opening move. All right, so let's go ahead and put the shelves on real fast. Uh, we'll make this relatively quick. I like to do this all during the daylight, right? And so this is a standard barn, or a barn, what am I saying? Wedge configuration. We're going to show you the barn configuration, and we have some tweaks to this. So this is an updated version of the wedge. I think we're on, like, version 4 or 5 now. So now that we have that placed outside, we can place this tile here. And I do like to make this wood because it's not a... Um, it's not going to help with the rate, so there's no reason to up your stone cost. So we're going to knock these down, and we'll show you the airlock we'll put on the front, and we'll show you the barn. And we'll show you the second floor, like a loose configuration. And this still can have electricity. You can even squeeze in a grow operation. I know. That's crazy. Um, you can do the box on the interior however you want. We'll just show you like a loosey-goosey configuration, but this is going to be your main TC area. Probably leave... It pretty open because I'm going to have to go back and upgrade it here in a second. Okay, so as you get low grade or steal them from decayed bases, you're going to go back here and place your 
furnace is. And what I would do is, if you have the uh, means, go to the bandit camp, even purchase them, learn them. It might be easier to purchase them. You can purchase two of them for, is it 80? 80 scrap total? This is a nice addition. We'll throw these on now because this is so this is so good for this. Um, you kind of want to do this on the interior if you can. So what you want to do is, um, this is going to be your output. So I go up to the top, I go to the bottom, and I find the space in between. You want to make sure it's in the middle of the wall from left to right, and uh, also in the middle from top to bottom. And then do this here, and then flip it, because this is going to be your input. And kind of do the same thing, like push it down, but then bring it back up. And the reason why you do this on the interior is the spot you put it in on is the one that's going to be the bulkiest. And so that way you kind of have your bunker can be completely sealed and you can still move things in and out. And we'll show you how these airlocks work. And it uh, actually adds to the confusion factor for this as far as people going, what's going on out here, right? Because we'll, we'll have like protected areas for this. Okay, let's put on this other door. And only now are we putting on a door. But you see how this saves you so much time and resources? Like, yeah, like by this time, I haven't even like probably smelted anything. This is all from me melting stuff down or even purchasing um, just some metal at the outpost. That's just how it works. Okay, so now we have the basic furnace in the back there. We're going to add the first airlock in the front. And this should be pretty standard fare. Uh, how you do this is you place your twig here. Uh, Yep, and then you're going to elevate the secondary piece, just like so, and then place these... Oops, I did not mean to put that there. I'll show you what this looks like here in a second. And then once you've done this elevated portion, I like to have this deleted, because that way you don't accidentally upgrade it, because you're going to be sitting there for a while if you have to punch it down. So this is what it looks like. And it's important you finish the rest of this, because technically I don't think these are connected yet, or they can decay. Um, and here's the thing. I, I really say keep things wood whenever you can. It's a very specific way in which you keep things wood because it really shows other big groups that you just don't have the cheese for it. Now, we have another variation of this top section. I don't even know if this is worth mentioning, but we'll kind of do it on another variation later, but we are just going to make this wood, or I'm sorry, a path here and a wood path here and then a frame here. Okay, so... Um, if you have a metal door now, I would say put it here, and then uh, a lot of times uh, you can upgrade these now to stone if you want to. And then these doors, if these are stone, you probably want these metal. So that what makes this really good is uh, you can then take these wooden doors and push them up. And I think it's very important that you do so because, um, again, I'd say try to stay away from the flashy doors on the exterior. I don't know if this one is flashy. Because um, the wooden doors really kind of throw people off. And so you can bait some people to come in and raid those wooden doors, but they're going to hit a metal door. So that's kind of what you want. And so these outside frames here are going to be wood. And you just move those other wooden doors you have up a little. Oops. And I, I keep these wood, uh, like, the whole time. Because even if somebody has, like, raiding materials, they're kind of like, do we want to even mess around with the wood? It just creates this, like, situation where they're like, I don't think so. And this top cap can be wood or it can be stone. I kind of like to keep it wood. But the, see how this interior is, like, stone? And so you have a single pass-through. You have two s different spots you can actually spill out of if you need to. Even if you get clapped, there's no way they can get on the interior because the doors block the other doors. I love the single pass-throughs. They're the best. I'll show you what this looks like from the top. Oh, my legs. Good morning, Mr. Carver. Good morning. Alright, so what I like to do inside of here is we're going to convert these other doors into metal. Um, a lot of times I keep these to light up doors. Um, because this is blocked from the exterior, and it's just, it's nice for navigating the base, to be honest. I like that skin. That one's good. And then we have this one open towards me. And if you have teammates, then you would use metal locks. But honestly, I start solo a lot of the time, so I usually start with wooden locks and then I convert them. Because think about it, that's 100 metal fragments per. When you're starting off, dude, that's expensive. All right, so these frames here are going to be wood to start, because as we upgrade later, those are going to turn into, like, door frames, uh, wall frames, and then uh, you'll put things like garage doors in there. When you can afford it, that's much later. These right here are going to be wood, and then the rest of this is going to be stone. 
And we're getting close to our uh, second floor here, and then hopefully we'll have the rest. If you can afford these top caps for stone, go for it. But if not, I get it. Sometimes you just don't. Let's put it this way. We ran like eight of these bases on multiple servers during the drought for nodes. So this is a definitely super cheap base to maintain. And then again, the whole reason why this top section exists is for you to do quick drop offs and also to like throw people off. It's just enough to give you space off of your airlock so you don't get door camped. And this is another solid state the base can stay in. And you can like maintain this. I guess we'll put some boxes up here. So like, this is a great place to just drop stuff off. You can even put a furnace downstairs, a fridge and a furnace, um, just below this, whatever. This keeps things nice and cheap, and I'll show you the upkeep cost is dirt, dirt cheap. See what I mean? That's like a stone node in a in a crumb. Not even a whole tree and not even a whole metal node a day. And so here's the other thing. We'll add the extra layer of protection real fast outside. Um, we'll go ahead and upgrade this. Because uh, this is definitely a state your base would stay in. We'll keep this stone. And if you don't have the windows, that's fine. You can stick a wooden do uh, window in here. Not the best, but at least it gives you some protection from them just coming in. Uh, in this case, we'll just put the upgraded windows. Now, here's what I like to do. So we're going to add extra layers of protection. When you're ready at, for this phase, you're going to go a bit further, and then you're going to do things like you're going to upgrade this back wall, you're going to upgrade this. But I would say make sure your honeycomb is in place when you do this. I upgrade these first. Metal is fine at first. Only when you have an abundance of high quality would you upgrade that. So your tool cupboard and the boxes around it are the most valuable thing you have. So you want to make sure you're also showing that you don't have money. So from the exterior, you can see that um, it's very obvious where the money is, so this is when you have the, the means to also put up each of these pieces of honeycomb. So each of these honeycomb pods for these triangles are going to cost you 900 stone a piece. So just figure a stone node for each of these with a little bit of upkeep. So you always kind of hide that you've got the money. So only when you've got enough materials to not only make the metal on the interior and have the upkeep, but you also want to make sure you have enough stone and wood to do the rest, because you don't want to give away you want to show this metal to the outside as little as possible or completely hide it. That's the best way to do it. And another tip too for people that like, like to play so they're like, man, I'm getting popped all the time. Well, first of all, try weeklies. You'll love them. Uh, less likely for that to happen. But also, um, if you're popping Zergs, which I totally recommend that you do, um, don't lead them back to your base. Or have multiple bases like this, and then they'll have a hard time figuring out what's what. All right, so we do need to upgrade this to stone. At some point, you know what, let's go ahead and make that metal. Let's say we've got the money, and then let's say our, our bunker mechanism is now metal. So that's a good start. Okay, that'll be hidden here in a second. All right, so now let me show you the, the top of this real fast. Because we're going to add the second floor as well, because you can obviously see the metal tiles on top, or a metal tile. But you've already got, like... Just by adding stone and adding just a few pieces of metal, this is already like a, a much beefier raid than what it was before. You have airlock protection, you have access to your roof, um, and more importantly, we're going to have a barn here in a second. So in addition to all of this extra stuff, this gets a little wild here. Let's do the second floor first. I'm trying to think. Should we do the barn? Yeah, you know what? Let's do the barn, because to be fair, you're probably going to want the barn up and running as quickly as possible. So let me just show you what this looks like. Typically, I would get the second floor going first, but it's not impossible. Okay, so here's the deal. What you can do to just get started, you can place the tile here, and as soon as you have the money, or remember that other uh, double door we had? Um, you can just place it down here for now. We'll make this stone and this stone. I th I'd say, like, I always start at the cheapest possible configuration, because that's just how I roll. But if you had that double door... I can't believe we just made a shot front. Um, what you could do is just kind of place it on the back cap. You guys seen enough aerial aerial views of this? I know it's different when I can't fly up and show you. And this is very similar to the other wedge, but here's the difference. When you place this here, 
A lot of times, uh, you can either upgrade this to metal so you can rotate it. Or if you're lucky enough and you have the stone and you upgrade it then, then you can flip it, but either way. Um, because this tile is going through it, it actually creates it as a half and half, so it's actually a hard side either way. But I like to have hard sides facing out and soft sides facing in. Okay, so here's the deal. When you do eventually get this, if you don't have a garage door, that's fine. Just put a metal door, double door on there. But um, you will have to get off the horse to do so. But check this out. Where is the garage door? There it is. Oh, wait, we already have garage doors. What am I saying? So check it out. If you have a garage door right here and you just have a wooden lock, you're good to go. You, you can pretty much just start stashing the horse inside of here. And then as you build the rest of this out, it'll be more and more protected. So let me go ahead and show you what this looks like. And then we'll show you the automatic door configuration. Um, I think this went to solid square first and then to triangle. And then honestly, if you have any other wooden doors, I put them for the exterior for these two spots here because really, it doesn't matter if somebody raids those. It's more about giving you protection long enough to place your drop-offs or pick up. Does that make sense? So like this would be your deposit and the other side's the withdrawal. Although I guess you would want metal on this side, right? But you wouldn't really keep stuff in here anyway. So yeah, you can totally keep them wood. Um, let me make these two wood here. I know this takes so much longer when we're not an admin. I do like to put the I have nothing on the outside. Strongly recommend. And yes, I like to keep these wood. You don't have to, but like, think about it. How many wooden doors are there now in this space? And you look at this and go, what? Alright, like, so this is only for using deposits. Right? As long as you're in there, right? You come in here, you do your drop off, and the, the bunker can be completely sealed. Just think about it. If you've got a all high quality bunker, it costs money every time you break it open. So like if you're solo, that starts to add up fast. So sometimes you just want to do some quick runs and then drop off. And the whole idea is you can have this base maintained and even another base as a solo easy. So like in here, this is also like your, your uh, what do you call it? Mixing table. Where is the mixing table, by the way? And our configurate. There it is. You can put a little bit of water in here, but check it out. I mean, I wish we had a horse to show you, but... I mean, you saw it on the PC. Then you'd have, like, a metal door here. And it's, like, enough to protect you from most garbage. So you can kind of see now how this whole thing works. Can I actually use this to step out? Yes, you can. So, like, that's the double door that goes in. And then, because we have all this, like, extra usable honeycomb... The base is even more protected from all sides. Uh, now you see why I typically do this where I can admin and fly up, right? Let me show this backside. I know this takes a lot longer, but hopefully this helps. I know showing context top down helps a lot. So now I know we have this like crazy ramp on the side, but this is how you would typically build this out. So now that you've got your, because um, you want to hide the fact that you have metal, right? So when you have the money, and I know this, again, we're doing this in phases, you're going to place a high foundation here, make that stone, place another half wall here, make that stone, and then come up here, make that stone, another half wall, soft side facing you, stone, stone. And this way, people don't have as an easy way to jump up, but it also really protects your main bunker mechanism. But here's the best part of this, ready? This is gonna blow your mind. And it's stupid cheap. And you could technically do this with a standard um, metal double door. But here's what we're gonna do. All you need is a door controller and a red button. That's it, that's it. I'll show you. So when you're on the horse, this works while you're on it or off of it. So quite literally, we can just put this here. We can find a door controller, like this. This works for a code lock or a wood lock, doesn't matter. Put it on the frame, unlock this, pair this. See, it's green, we're good. Then we relock this, and we all we have to do, no power, nothing. Find the output with the red button, move it up, and over to the door controller. It is just enough for it to activate. And the, because the way the door controller works, 
it will have enough power for it to open, and then it will immediately shut because this doesn't generate enough power to hold it open. So watch, if I just press it and I back up, watch what happens. It goes open and it goes right to shut. It is perfect for leaving with the horse. You're up on the horse, you just hit the button, and you start galloping away quickly. And then the, the door automatically shuts. Then when you're on the horse, the trick is because she moves so quickly, you, you walk in like this, and it's kind of hard to like turn around and get it. That's why you have the button typically here. And then you just hit the button on the way in, and then it also shuts the door. And there's enough room in here for you to turn the horse around and then put out. Technically, you can put two horses in here. And then you would make this, obviously, a metal door. Or a garage door. Probably a garage door if you can afford it. And then you put like a double door on the interior. We don't have too many double door skins, do we? We just don't. I like to have this one kind of facing out. Oh, we've got the do not build section there. Okay, great. But you can already see how like this is just enough. Is this, do we have to push this back further? I didn't push it back far enough. Or we could put it on the other wall. That would work too. But like you've got all these doors on the exterior of this base and it really confuses people. That's all active usable honeycomb. You've got your airlock in the front here that's very functional. More wooden doors. I can't tell you how many times people uh, we've signed in and the bunker is completely sealed and we find some of the wooden doors knocked off and they're like, yeah, we quit. So think about it. You put all of your, um, if you sign off for the evening, you would go up here and put like, I don't know, all of your burlap trash up here, you know, your stone tools or, you know, whatever you have an abundance of in here because eh, it might get raided. But think about it. All your really good stuff goes on the interior here. And... You can seal at the base. Look at this. Go back to metal. Boom. Completely sealed. And it's very manageable. And check this out. So we'll upgrade more of the interior here and then we'll show you the second floor. Now, if you are running monuments, you may have enough loot to put a armored door here. And if you do, that's when you would make this metal. But don't upgrade that any further because it's unnecessary. This needs to probably be metal there. This will be metal once you have your second floor. And what's cool about this is, even if you've got this window here, there's another way to make this more secure or to make it more difficult. It's not 100%, but it definitely slows them down. So if you sign off for the night, you would put this up. So it's even harder to raid. So they're going to splash that first, and the metal wall holds them back. See what I mean? So let's go ahead and look at the uh, cost of this before we put on the second floor. What's the upkeep? Still extremely manageable. 1600, 1696 stone, so two stone nodes. 581 metal fragments, okay. That is one metal node and not even a full tree, so 417 wood a day. For like crazy protection. You got three furnaces on the interior. If you need more furnace power, you can do it up here in the back section. All right, so let's go ahead and show you the second floor real quick and we'll wrap up the, uh, the wedge barn. Okay, so we'll kind of keep it on the simple side here. What I do like to do is I like to put a locker here, and this is where the battery is going to go on this back side. So let's go ahead and just crap those up real fast. Because I don't want to make this terribly long, right? Right? Uh, where's our battery? A medium battery. You can buy this at the Bandit Camp, easy mode. I'll just kind of show you where all this stuff sits. I don't think I'll necessarily plug everything in because it's going to take too long like the battery stuff, but like at least you'll know where the battery cabinet sits. And you know what, we'll make the um... Nah, we'll make the back wall here. We'll make this all part of the grow ops. This back section here can all be for like growing and stuff. That's what that back wall is for. This will make sense in a minute. I know, it's, a it's a little wild, I know. This is nice too because you can place this right in the back corner. And this is like just big enough to like keep you everything you need. And then if you get like super rich, it's not a problem. You just go build another one of these. Right? Or then you can go big crazy base if you really want to. No one's stopping you. But I'll, I always start off small in these like little bite sized chunks so you can afford it because I see people expanding too quickly. Or, like, they can afford the expansion, but they can't afford the upkeep for two days. Do you know what I mean?
And again, once you have everything all plugged in here, uh, you can slap a window on. It's nice. And this becomes another loot shelf. And to be real, this one's going to be uh, stone here. And then what I like to do... When you can afford it, you're going to make these metal caps. But that's about it. And then we'll do an extra piece of honeycomb. And that way your loot room upstairs is also very protected. But again, you want to stick all components, boom, skibbity boom, downstairs in the main pit. But all of these extra layers help add this, like, it's like usable, it's all usable honeycomb. And this back room here is meant to be all wood, and then you'd have, like, a water container back here, and then, like, some crop plots. That's why you have it. And then I put solar panels on the roof, dude, all day. This will be stone. I'll show you how all this works right here, because I, I know this is a little goofy, but it's meant to be. We'll have like, I don't know what we have up top here. Maybe this. Um, okay, so the jump up's here. And the reason why we have that back area is because that's where the grog, um operation is. Again, very similar to the T-Wedge. But you leave this wood up here because it throws people off because you're doing your grow up in there. So you kind of want to, you want your base to show these like signs of like, hey, is it worth it? And you'd be like, no, it's not. But it's it's actually quite a beefy boy. And I'll just throw the solar panels up here. I won't connect everything. Like you've got roof access. You have multiple ways to leave the base. You have deposit spots on the base. So even if you're totally sealed up and you're totally like armored and stuff, there's there's a way for you to like spawn inside the base and like push your loot out. Are we running out of doors? Door locks? So, check this out. I know this is a little, a little goofy, but it'll work. Wait, where are our traps again? Right, right here? No. Yes? Dude, I've been looking at the PC version so long. Our category for this is... Where does the shotgun trap set? There it is. Really? It's by the campfire? Weird. Um, so what I like to do here is uh, obviously stick some more garage doors, or double doors if you can't afford it. There's a loot room back here. Maybe we'd probably put one box in there or something so it makes sense. But as you start to get those materials, that's when you start to upgrade stuff. So things you keep upstairs are less valuable than things you keep downstairs. It's very important. And then you see how it's like we're hiding all of the... Uh, the upgrades we have on the base. And then again, once you have high quality, you can upgrade downstairs, but keep it small to start. And only do it like when you're about to sign out because then you're you're paying less upkeep. Does that make sense? Because typically when you're on, most people won't attack you. Or if they do, you can put up enough of a fight to stop them. It just kind of helps with everything, you know? And then even like, even in this cabinet here, stick your less valuables on the top shelf and your more valuable stuff on the bottom. Does that make sense? Because, think about it, we have a, a stone piece here, so they have to raid this and then raid through this. Then they might raid that, but then, you know what I mean? Like, it just takes them longer to work their way down. Alright, so, uh, let's get this other piece here. Something real cute. Alright, so we'll put, like, a garage door here if we can afford it. Um, and honestly, if you don't have garage doors, you can put a double door here. You just have to take it off the frame when you want to go upstairs. I know, it's annoying, but it is what it is. And now, uh, you will soft side these wooden walls here and turn these into frames. And then it just makes your base that much more protected. And again, if you can afford double doors, go for it. If not, go, um, go garage door. I just want to show you what this all looks like when it's totally upgraded. And you guys have seen us do this so many times. This is quite literally the base I use every time. Beefcake. Watch, we'll seal this up and we'll show you just how OP this is. Actually, let's go outside. We'll show you the barn part. Oh, you know what? we got to stick the uh, solar panels on top real fast. Ugh. If you're just doing growing, 
two solar panels is enough. If you want to do a turret or get a bit more charge, four solar panels total. You use a root combiner, you're good to go. It is the wedge barn base, right? You've got a spot to put horses immediately. You can actually build this out very quickly. Even with double doors, it's a place for you to stash your horses. When you're a bit more sophisticated, or even just have a little bit more uh, metal fragments, you can instantly make a door controller and then a red button to make an automatic door system. You still have this place all like cordoned off and ready to go because you can still do your mixing table stuff here. You can store up to two horses near. It gets a bit snug, but it still works. Perfect for solos or duos. So legit. And then look, you just as you run out, you hit this, and you're like, bye. Automatically shuts. I know, so much harder to show when you're on the ground. What's up, Mr. Russo? He says, good morning, sunshine. Good morning, sugar cheeks. All right, let's show you where the solar panels go. And then we'll show you the total upkeep, and then we'll seal it up, and so we'll show you what the total cost is. And this is with no high quality. Honestly, if somebody sees this base, they're going to go, yeah, I'm good. <laughs> right? Because it looks silly. Oh, yeah, by the way, we got to put our metal door here, and then our shotgun trap. What's great is you can leave this open while you're online, and then if somebody deeps you or comes down, make sure this is pushed up nice and tight. They won't see this, and they fall down the shaft and get lit up. It's nice. Poor man's protection. I can tell you how many times somebody spent the money to pop the top here, but then they just don't go in further because they're like, oh, this is not what I thought it was. Okay, so if you're placing solar panels, go northeast and southwest. For morning and afternoon. Again, I want to hook this all up because that takes a hot second. I have plenty of other stuff where I've done the wedge where I plug it all in. That's what that looks like upstairs. Uh, you can put four. Just put them in clusters of two. You can buy them at the outpost for 75 a pop. Or if you have the tech trash, go for it. But I know that's more advanced. We have the battery compartment upstairs. We're going to steal this up here in a sec. Battery compartment back here. Locker over here. You can pop these off when you're online. Uh, you can stick a lock on the locker too, just in case. I would stick some kits in there. I wouldn't put your best stuff on, or at least put your best stuff in there when it's your online. I do like to leave that uh, twig. Let's go ahead and seal this up here. Uh, a lot of times, if you're going to do any of the components for your electronics, I do like to stick them in the main room downstairs here. I'm going to show you what this looks like all sealed up. I'll show you where the uh, workbench goes. If you have another teammate, they're going to go right next to you. I'm just going to get the last couple pieces here. I'm telling you, man, it's so good for solos, duos, even trio. If you have a trio, you won't have space for another box. But if you're duo, it's enough to do this and then place another large box like close. You get this guy right there and then do another large box right off the side. And then you're like set, man. It's like enough to get you going. You'll be right on the shoreline, good to go. I had that for a second. Was that blue for a second? Am I crazy? There it is. So you have your tool cupboard completely decked out with boxes. You've got the extra two boxes here. If you've got your trio, you'll have to take this box out. But this is just enough to get you going. You've got a little spot under the tool cupboard here. You can place your electronics on the top frame. Uh, even on the ceiling tile for your connective pieces. More over here. Uh, you've got your three furnaces in the back. Completely protected. And let's see what the upkeep is. Drum roll, please. 2,701 stone, so three stone nodes, 937 metal fragments, that's two, two uh, metal nodes, and 440 wood. So one tree, two metal, and then two, I'm sorry, three stone nodes for the wedge barn bunker base. I had to think about that name for a second, and you're completely sealed and good to go. Nice. Cozy, functional, hot.